Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. Congratulations to you all on the birth of our beloved first Imam, Imam Ali alayhi salam, and welcome to the first edition of our weekly news bulletin on Vilayat TV. I'm Abur Sabzwari. Devastating EF5, a two-mile-wide tornado smashed through Oklahoma on Monday, killing 24 people and damaging up to 13,000 homes. Tensions running high after a brutal, clever attack on a British soldier in broad daylight in London. Iraq bombings reignite fears of a slide back into sectarian civil war. Pro-Taliban, the Obandi police constable has killed a Shia police officer who was station house officer at Gulistan police station in Quetta, Pakistan. Pakistan's former military ruler Pervez Musharraf has been granted bail in the case of the assassination of the former Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto. Chinese Prime Minister Li Qixiang on his visit to India says the two countries need to work towards peace and tranquility across the borders. Chinese Premier Li Qixing arrived in Pakistan on Wednesday after his stop in India, making it the first trip abroad since assuming office in March. And today is the 13th of Rajab on the Islamic calendar, marking the birth anniversary of our first holy Imam, Imam Ali alayhi salam. Festivities are being celebrated worldwide. And now the news in detail. A two-mile-wide tornado slammed Oklahoma City area on Monday, killing 24 people and injuring more than 300. The massive twister blasted an area outside of Oklahoma City, ripping roofs off buildings, leveling homes, and cutting a 17-mile-wide path of destruction, the scale of which is just starting to be made clear. The victims' bodies were sent to Oklahoma's office of the chief medical examiner, confirming the tornado's first fatalities. Authorities had no immediate estimate on the number of injured for given the scale of devastation. According to the Oklahoma City Mayor Mick Cornett, between 12,000 and 13,000 homes were either destroyed or damaged. Pounding rain-soaked tornado ravaged Moore, Oklahoma on Thursday morning. Strong winds sent pieces of debris flying, hindering recovery efforts three days after the devastating event. All people thought missing have been accounted for at this time, according to Governor Mary Fallon. The Department of Emergency has stated about 377 people have been treated for injuries as a result of this week's storms. President Obama will travel to Oklahoma on Sunday to inspect the damage by the tornado. Press Secretary Jay Carney said Obama will meet with families displaced by the violent storm. He will also be thanking emergency workers who responded to the destruction. Carney said Obama has instructed federal agencies to provide all available resources to support the efforts of state officials. A British soldier was slain in London in a gruesome, clever attack on Wednesday. The 25-year-old victim was identified by the UK ministry as Lee Rigby of 2nd Battalion. British police have arrested a man and woman both aged 29 on Thursday on suspicion of conspiracy to murder, according to the London's Metropolitan Police. Police also have stated that warranted searches have been carried out at six residential addresses. The scene Wednesday in southeast London's Woolwich neighborhood has revealed through cell phone camera footage and witness accounts. It was gory and for many unbearable to believe. Britain's capital has not witnessed an alert of this kind since the summer of 2005 when London's public transport network was targeted with bomb attacks. Prime Minister David Cameron, who rushed back Wednesday night from an official trip to Paris, told reporters Thursday that Britain would be absolutely resolute in the face of terrorism. Lee Rigby was a machine gunner, Royal Palace's drummer and father to a two-year-old son, Jack. In less than a week, more than 220 Iraqis have been killed in a series of attacks. In the past two days, at least 89 people have died in bomb blasts. 13 people died in the most recent attacks on two Shia mosques south of Baghdad. Dozens of Sunni and Shia mosques have been targets of bomb attacks this year. The most senior UN official says he fears the country may slide back into sectarian civil war. Martin Kobler, the special representative of the UN Secretary General, says the Shia-dominated government and its Sunni detractors must work out a compromise to solve the situation. 
Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki accused militant groups of trying to exploit Iraq's political instability to exacerbate sectarian tensions at home. He blamed the recent spike in violence on the wider unrest in the region, particularly in neighboring Syria. At the same time, he pledged today that insurgents will not be able to bring back the atmosphere of the sectarian war. Pro-Taliban, the Obandi police constable has killed Shia police officer Awaz Ali. Awaz Ali was station house officer SHO at Gulistan police station of Gulistan area of Quetta, Pakistan on Tuesday. According to details, police constable Nematullah, who has been arrested, opened fire upon his officer and killed him. Police constable Nematullah confessed he killed Awaz Ali, stating he was a Shia police officer and I killed him. Pro-Taliban militants have killed thousands of innocent Shia Muslims in Pakistan, but government and law enforcement agencies have failed to protect their citizens across the country. Mr. Musharraf has been granted bail in the killing of Bhutto. An anti-terrorism court in Rawalpindi, Pakistan, granted Mr. Musharraf bail on charges relating to the death of former Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto, who was assassinated in 2007 while Mr. Musharraf was in power. His lawyer Salman Safter said bail, which was set close to $20,000, represented Mr. Musharraf's first legal relief since his dramatic return from exile in March and subsequent arrest. The decision will not, however, set the former military leader free. He remains under house arrest at his luxury villa outside Islamabad. India and China pledged to bring peace and tranquility across the borders. Chinese Premier Li Keqiang on his visit to India said that the two nations must improve mechanisms to settle a long-running border dispute, pledging his commitment to peace and tranquility across the borders. The leaders papered over their recent border spat on Monday with a friendly joint statement and an array of promises for economic and military cooperation. Trade between the two countries has soared over the last 10 years. China is one of India's top trading partners, and both countries have already agreed a new $100 billion bilateral trade target for 2015. Premier Li said he had agreed to address India's concerns about the size of the trade deficit with China. The neighboring nations have agreed that their special representatives will meet soon to continue discussions, seeking an early agreement on a framework for a fair and mutually acceptable boundary settlement. And after his stop in India, Chinese Prime Minister Li Keqiang arrived in the Pakistani capital Islamabad on Wednesday under tight security measures. He addressed the Senate on Thursday, saying the country had made tremendous progress despite facing several challenges. Pakistan was one of the first countries to switch diplomatic allegiance from Taiwan to China in 1950. Lee emphasized that China and Pakistan should remain trustworthy partners. He said there is still great potential for the relationship during a lunch meeting attended by Prime Minister-elect Nawaz Sharif and President Asif Zardari. Bilateral trade last year rose above $12 billion for the first time, and both sides are aiming to reach $15 billion in the next two to three years. He also highlighted the importance of carrying out priority projects in connectivity, energy development, and power generation, promoting the building of a China-Pakistan economic channel. The power shortages of more than 20 hours a day have sparked violent protests and deteriorated key industries in Pakistan, costing hundreds of thousands of jobs in a country already weighed down by a failing economy, high unemployment, widespread poverty, sectarian bloodshed and a Taliban insurgency. Pakistan and China signed a series of cooperation documents relating to the economy, culture, science and technology. And the birth anniversary of Imam Ali salam is being celebrated all over the world today. One of the highlights of the month of Rajab eagerly looked forward to is the birth anniversary of the appointed successor of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam, peace be upon him and his family. 13th Rajab marks the birthday of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Celebrations are taking place worldwide and especially here in North America. Islamic communities and centers across North America have organized programs in the celebration of Imam Ali Islam's Viladat. We pray on this day that Allah accept our acts of worship and guide us on the path of His beloved, the commander of the faithful. 
Thank you for joining us here on Velayat News. We hope you stay tuned to the Velayat TV special 12-hour transmission as we celebrate the Viladat of our holy Imam Ali Alayhislam. Congratulations to you all on this blessed day. You can get the latest news and more by tuning into velayattv.org. I'm Abru Sabzwari.